Well, Discovery Church, I am super excited to be here this morning sharing a little bit of what God's placed in my heart in this becoming series uh, to start this year. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm glad to have you here with me this morning. We're just a few weeks into 2021, which means that if you've set any goals for this year, you're actually a part of the very small group of people who actually set goals for 2021. And so you've had about three, four weeks now to work on those goals or habits. Now, I don't want to burst your bubble because I, for one, am uh, one of those people who believe in setting goals each year. I think it's a really great way to set intentions for the year. But if, uh, and if you're a goal-driven person, they can actually provide a really helpful target, not just at the beginning of the year, but right throughout. The sad truth about New Year's resolution setting though is that only 19% of people end up keeping their resolutions. Um, there's another article that I actually read and it gave you a little bit more, maybe till the mid-February, but Psychology Today um, says that most people abandon their resolutions by mid-January. Now, how does that happen? Why does that happen? Well, along the way to creating new habits of working out every day, we might sleep in, or maybe we injure ourselves. Um, what was on the way to becoming a really great routine, it got interrupted, so we get discouraged. Uh, that financial goal that you set, well, that had a bit of a setback when you lost your job or when you had to take a pay cut. Maybe the, your intention to be a little more present with friends and family last year was sidelined when finally overtime work became available to you. So you had to catch up on payments. You had to make the difficult decision to prioritize work over time with your people. Life circumstances has a way of cramping our style sometimes, doesn't it? Even with our best plans in place, the sobering fact is that we don't have control over how it all will play out nor do we have the ability to actually see what the future is going to hold, which sometimes can be all kinds of disappointing. What's even more discouraging is when we experience this burst of motivation to plan something brand new, and then we take steps to moving towards becoming a better you, uh, to commit, committing to having a little bit more time in our day with God, only to get interrupted or off track, and then that leads to self-pity and the why bothers begin. Well, this was me last year trying to get into a groove of waking up early to have some me time. Now, if you are a parent, you can understand how challenging it can be to find a quiet moment for yourself. And even if you're not a parent, maybe you live with a bunch of extroverts or your home just happens to be a little extra loud, quiet time is that bright spot in the day. Well, I decided that I wanted to get up early enough to have at least 45 minutes with a hot cup of coffee and uh, some time to read and to journal. Well, can I tell you how much of a headache that was? I had set myself, I'd set myself an alarm for 6 a.m. only to have one of the kids meet me at the bedroom door. Hey mom, can you make me something to eat? Or as soon as the alarm goes off, it felt like I had just went to bed because, well, one of the little ones woke up with a nightmare and needed me to help them get back to sleep. There were weeks of this back and forth. I'd have four or five days straight and then an interruption oh, I should really get back at it because it was really awesome being able to get up early and then, you know, the lack of consistency, um, what felt were just, they were interruptions. And I get so frustrated uh, still having the desire to establish this routine of spending time with God in the morning, but I was discouraged with myself and would say, well, why bother? It's not going to happen anyways. I was disappointed in myself and now even hesitant to move forward. So that desire became a bit of a distant memory, a setback. It created hesitation. So here we are trying something once and we fail and then we deem ourselves incapable. Sound familiar? Well, Moses in the book of Exodus, he had a similar issue. He had his own set of uh, setbacks and hesitations and in Exodus 3, we see this situation where God meets Moses at a burning bush. Now, this is an incredible experience. I can't even imagine. While he's in God's presence at the burning bush, God reveals himself to Moses in such a beautiful way. He shares with Moses the plan to free the people from the Egyptians. In verse 9 and 10 of Exodus 3, God shares with Moses this. Now, I've heard the cry of the Israelites. It's reached me, and I ha have seen how severely the Egyptians are oppressing them. Therefore, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. Now, Moses had a desire for the people to be free. 
but in no way did he feel that he was prepared enough, experienced enough, or enough in any way for that job. In verse 12, Moses asked God, who am I that I should go? Then he goes on and says, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, God of your, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask, what is his name? Moses has hesitations, insecurities, and his track record wasn't perfect. That's for sure. Good intentions, though, don't always lead to great results. And that's where sometimes we get tripped up, isn't it? We start with intentions of setting out our day the way that we feel it would be really awesome and then we fail. So we're hesitant to try again. We set out to do something brave, something we've never done before, only to be told that we're not qualified enough. But if there's one thing that we can learn from Moses this morning, and it's his step of obedience anyways. He obeys and gets started with the plan that God had for him. You see, God promises Moses a few times as he unveils this plan to him. In verse 19, he says, I know that the king of Egypt will not allow you to go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the, the Egyptians with all the wonders I will perform among them. And then again in 20, uh, verse 21, he says, I will grant this people such favor in the sight of the Egyptians that when you leave, you will not go away empty handed. So now Moses hears this. He's probably encouraged in his heart. God has a plan for us. He's going to he's going to free the uh, free us from the Egyptians. And like many of us, he probably had this burst of motivation of stepping into something new, only now to be faced with disbelief in himself, lacking courage. Perhaps he was faced with the lies that he had believed about himself. He's fearful that he's not capable. Today, I want us all to ask ourselves the question, what have you wanted to do, but you're fearful or hesitant to do? Now let's take that a little step further. What has God asked you to do that you haven't put feet to yet? Is there a dream that he's placed in your heart that you've set aside? Is there a desire that he's been whispering to your heart about? This past year has been bananas. I'm not going to shy away from that. I think that we can all say that there's so many circumstances that were not ideal. And seasons like this have a way of discouraging us. These seasons have a way of getting us stuck in wrong thinking and unhealthy, unhealthy habits. And they have a way of setting us back. And if we allow it by just being passive, they can, have a, they can also be what the enemy will use to not just set us back, but keep us back from all that we are becoming in God. Have you considered that the dream or the plan that God's placed in your heart is exactly what your family needs, but the enemy hates the thought of it? He hates the thought that you would no longer be held back by disappointment or be because then you'd be a threat to what he's doing. And so he'll keep on reminding you all of the things that you aren't and all the things that you need to be good enough at in order to fulfill the plan of God. So this morning, we're going to dig into week three of our Becoming series. And I believe that God wants to say something to us through his interaction with Moses. It's his response to Moses' hesitation when, he, when Moses was asked to step into something new. That's what we're going to fixate on a little bit this morning. The journey of becoming who God has created us to be sometimes can be sidelined by our own disbelief and our own discouragement. Moses in Exodus 4, this is where he was stuck. And so he says to the Lord after the Lord has explained this beautiful plan of how he was going to free the Israelites, well, what if they don't believe me or listen to my voice? For they might say, the Lord hasn't appeared to you. Verse 2, the Lord says, what is that in your hand? Now, God doesn't tell him what it is. He just gently nudges Moses to recognize the tool that he's already been given. It's Moses', rec Moses responsibility to see what's in his hand and to see it as useful for the season that God called him to. And today, in the midst of fear, in the midst of disappointment, discouragement, you might feel to get started on something new. Do you feel the nudge to pick up what you put down last spring? Perhaps there's a dream that God birthed in your heart years ago, like years ago, and you've never felt prepared or ready. 
maybe you felt it was time to start searching out um, a professional counselor and begin the process of healing that your heart needs, whatever it is. Just know that God will equip you, give you the strength and resources. He will give you what you need. And perhaps what you need is already has already been given to you. You just need to recognize it as the tool that it is. What is that in your hand, God asks him? A staff, he replies. As simple as that, Moses recognized what it was and God began to give him direction. In verse three, the Lord said, throw it on the ground. And God in the next few verses gives direction to Moses, which he follows, he obeys. And the things that he did with the staff would be used to build his faith, to let him know that God is with him. Not only that, it became a sign to confirm to the people who Moses later would become to them, their leader who had been called by God to lead them. Recognizing the significance of the staff in his hand was the first step for him. Now, I believe that sometimes it's about timing. Sometimes we have to wait for God's time when it comes to these sorts of things. And sometimes it's just as much about our willingness to take a step. You know, God doesn't look for our circumstances to be perfect or ideal. He's not looking for a specific set of skills to be active. He looks, when God looks to activate his plan, he looks for a willingness to obey and a willingness to take that first step. God honors those who steward what's in front of them well. Those who see what's placed, he that he's already placed in their hands. What is it that's in your hand? That's the question we need to answer today. What is it that's in your hand? Sometimes we underestimate what God wants to do through us. Sometimes we spend more time than necessary disqualifying ourselves from God's plan. Can I tell you something? God has a plan and a purpose for you, and there's nothing that can change that. His thoughts about you, as uh, Psalm 139 paints this beautiful picture. If you haven't read it, please take take some time this week to read through it. It talks about how God has made us in our mother's womb, and that he had these thoughts and these beautiful plans for us way before we were even born. And so you might have experienced this crazy, crazy year. Maybe you've had challenge after challenge in 2020 setback after setback, maybe it's been years of it. You got logs of insecurities and hesitations. Maybe now you're making excuses. The dream he has for you, that plan he has for you, it hasn't changed one bit, not one bit. Can you name it? Maybe at some one point you wrote it down. Maybe it's written down somewhere. That thing that God was leading you to do before hesitation or before the setback. What? has God asked you to do that you haven't put feet to yet? Is there a dream that he's placed in your heart that you've set aside? Is there something that he's whispering or has been whispering to you deep into your heart? Something that you need to take steps to become? Take a moment, say it aloud, write it down if you haven't already, and now let hope stir up in your heart. Connect with that again. Now let's call out the thing that's been holding you back. For Moses, this was insecurity of speaking to the people. He felt he wasn't gifted at all. In Exodus 3, God meets Moses at the burning bush and it's in in the presence of God that Moses hears God's plan for the people. And so he, uh, and he declared that he would be with Moses the whole way. God had shown Moses that he had his back. He was mighty and, um, and that's, what he could count on. But these setbacks that we have sometimes in life, they can be pretty strong and they can impact our faith pretty strongly. Um, They can make us forget about the faithfulness of God and make us forget about how powerful he is. Our hesitations, they can be hard to push back. And so we see in Exodus 3, Moses questioned God whether or not he was fit for the job. But again, in Exodus 4, Moses voices his concern And it's a little more specific. Moses gets to the heart of his insecurity. And in verse 10, this is what he says to God. But Moses pleaded with the Lord, O Lord, I am not very good with words. I never have been. And I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. And the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether 
People speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see. Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. That Moses says again, he pleaded, Lord, please send anyone else. So Moses brought to God his hesitations and his insecurity. And in the presence of God, uh, Moses was able to unload all of these things that he just wasn't sure about. God's plans are big, you guys, and sometimes that can feel overwhelming. God gives us plans and dreams, but he also gives us time and space to be human. He cares about the reasons behind your hesitation. He cares about the fear. He cares about the worry, the pain, the disappointment that you've experienced. We can bring that to God. He wants us to bring that to God. He wants you uh, to see that this is your process to becoming more like him, to becoming more fully the person that he dreamed of you becoming. This is your story, not your friend's story. We have to avoid the temptation to compare what other stories look like, don't we? What God's placed in my hand most likely looks very different from what he's placed in yours. And so it's my responsibility to steward what I've been given. And it's your responsibility to steward what you've been given. Some of us have been so discouraged by setbacks in the past that we've lost the motivation to even begin to dream again. And while we've used the why bother lines on God and told him all the reasons why we should move on, he should move on to someone else, the truth is that desire in our hearts is still there. And rather than making steps towards becoming the person and, and putting feet to the dream that God has placed in you, you're now harboring bitterness towards a friend or someone that you know that actually took the steps a few years back and now they're miles ahead down the road with your dream in hand. Can I tell you? That just as quickly as Moses disqualifies himself with insecurity, we can disqualify ourselves with comparison and jealousy. Now, that's not to say that God's plan has changed at all. God does not desire perfection from us, just a willingness to obey. And often we find ourselves in these places where he wants to first do a deep work of healing and forgiveness in our lives. And this is the space where he allows our humanity to exist, where he wants to come into those spaces and bring healing, bring fear, freedom, so that we can begin to get back on the right track again, moving forward, taking and taking steps towards what he wants us to be. We just need to call it what it is. Maybe what's been holding us back, maybe it's jealousy that has now caused a deep-rooted pride to set in. Can I remind you, who is in a fight for your heart just as much as God? It's the enemy. And it may have started with one failed attempt, which triggered an insecurity and led to some discouragement where a lie settled into your heart. It's time to break ties with that. God has positioned you right where you are right now. Let's not let the setback hold you back from where God wants to take you this year in 2021. He follows through. God follows through with every single plan that he makes. And He, we can depend upon him to be with us for the whole journey. Just as he promised Moses, we can be confident that he will equip us for it. Here's another thing that we need to recognize. God's plan isn't solely dependent upon me. And it isn't solely dependent upon you. And that's what the beauty of the body of Christ is. It's so beautiful. When Moses is vulnerable with God about his insecurities of speaking, God doesn't say, well, I think I've made a mistake. <laughs> You're not the man for the job. You're not going to be as great as I thought you would. No, God didn't say all those things. Instead, he showed Moses a little bit more of the plan. In Exodus 4.14, he says, what about your brother Aaron Le the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you and he'll be glad to see you. You shall speak and put words in his mouth and I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you and it'll be as if your mouth, he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. But take the staff in your hand so that you can perform the signs with it. No, God didn't once put Moses down or make him feel any less. God knew Moses' limitations. He knew his humanity and saw greatness and potential in him anyways. God still saw Mo the Moses that he could become. God was gentle 
and kind with his words. Aaron is already on his way. God knew Moses' insecurity could have held him back, but he already put this plan in motion that would support Moses. Aaron was to be a part of the plan. He wasn't someone that Moses would use to compare himself to or be jealous of, but rather to work with. For some of us today, the answer to the what's, it, what's that in your hand question may not be a thing, may not be time, it might not be a skill. For you, it may be a person. There may be an Aaron that God placed in your life or will place in your life that you were to learn from or to lean on. When we go to the end of the chapter in verse 29 to 31, we'll see that God kept his word to Moses. He trusted, Moses trusted God's plan. He obeyed, he followed his direction and the people believed his leadership was established and he was able to step into the role that God had for him. I don't know about you, but I'm not interested in living halfway to the potential that God has placed in me. I'm sure that even uh, that you're probably feeling the same way. And I'd like just to, to clue this up this morning, just to take a few moments to reflect on these questions today. So right now, just break out your soap Bible guide journal. Uh, or your notes on your phone. We're going to drop a link in the comments in just a few moments, like a suggested worship song that you can reflect on these questions and settle in for five or 10 minutes. Let's allow these questions to be our starting point. We're nearly uh, a month into 2021, and it's not too late to have this conversation with God to kind of get back to growing in him. He still has a plan, something planned for you. There are steps for you to take forward, something for you to learn, something for you to grow in in this year. So let's reflect on those questions. The first one is, what dream or desire has God placed in your heart that you've set aside? You know, what is that thing that he's been whispering to you in your heart? Ask God to remind you or to reveal what that is. Question number two, what's holding you back? So jot down specifics that come to your mind. Ask God to reveal areas that the enemy may have been lying to you about. And then number three, what is it? What is that in your hand? You know, the thing that can help you take that one step forward. God's plan for us is big and yeah, it can be overwhelming sometimes. And I think that's why God only gave Moses part of the plan. He often gives us just a little insight into the big picture. Can you imagine if Moses was told that he was gonna part the Red Sea? I think he might've bolted pretty quickly. Um, but I think that's why he just needed, God just needed Moses to get started, just to take that one step. And that's what the staff was for him. Mother, Mother Teresa said that if you can't feed a hundred people, then just feed one. In other words, just get started. Start where you are with what you have. And so identify that one step this week. Doesn't matter how big, doesn't matter how small, um, no matter how slow you might move or grow in 2021, at least you're moving, at least you're growing. Now today, uh, you might be hearing about this God who has a plan and a purpose for you and you'd like to know how to experience healing and freedom from the setbacks that you've experienced in your life. I'd like to uh, invite you to accept salvation. And so this might be the very first step that you might want to take this morning um, in welcoming a relationship with God into your life. And so if that's you, uh, would you just bow your head and pray with me? You can repeat after me if you'd like. Uh, God, thank you so much that you see potential in me. Thank you so much that you have a purpose and you have designed me um, and you thought of me way before I was born. I know I need you. I need a savior in my life. And so I confess my sins to you this morning and ask you to come into my life, make me new, help me to become who it is that you've made me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, um, God, this morning, as we just take a few moments just to um, to close off this time, God, I pray that as we all come together and um, take, take a few moments after this to reflect on the questions before us, God, I pray that you would help us uh, be able to connect again with the dream that you've placed in our hearts connect with who it is that you're calling us to be. God, I pray that you would help us identify what's holding us back, um, those setbacks of discouragement, the lies that we've believed. And Lord, I pray that um, we would also be able to identify what it is that you've already placed in our hands. What is that tool? What is that first step? God, I thank you uh, that you 
give us space to be human, to be, um, to be in our weakness, to be in our limitations, but then you still see greatness and you call us forward. So God, I pray that today as we take time to just reflect, um, that you will meet us there, meet each and every person who spends time um, this morning just wrestling with this. We thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your great plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Discovery Church, we believe in you. We know that God has a purpose for you, and that hasn't changed one bit. Lauren and I love you. We believe in you, and we just want to encourage you. Take a few minutes right after this. Let's take that one step this week uh, towards who it is that God has made us to be. Take care.